Uh, my name is Raylan Allen. I'm with Past Stone Corporation. We had a really rich conversation yesterday. It was definitely emotionally fueled as this is not a new problem. Um, and one of the things that we talked about is we can't ignore its root causes. In the 1980s, a lot of these rural areas lost um, their economies. So with that loss of jobs, we, they lost a lot of the community pillars that keep um, communities strong, which is jobs, public schools started to fail, and family structures started to break down with drug use beginning in the late 80s. So now we're looking at second generational drug users, and the problem is much deeper than just today. Um, we talked about how in rural areas, many of uh, the people that need to know what's going on do not know what's going on. So education is the main um, thing that we need to be pushing forward in terms of drug addiction and what this means for the communities and getting the right people involved to spread that information. Some key stakeholders are local municipalities working with the regional ones. As some towns of um, 500 people or less don't necessarily have a hospital even within a couple hundred miles of them. So how do we work with local municipalities and what's happening regionally um, in these areas? Faith-based communities, um, public health workers, HUD and USDA. Um, this is sort of a bad time for HUD to have uh, cut funding for transitional housing. So I, so I think we need to go back and reassess what transitional housing means in terms of those who are um, active drug users. Uh, USDA um, is doing a pilot program right now where they are in four different states and they're offering um, landlords extra or an additional rental subsidy for a unit for active for users who are um, being successful in drug court. So I think that we all need to keep up on how that pilot is going with USDA to find out if it's working. And if it is working, how do we um, make it available in other states? There's a large lack of coordination among services. So how can we, with HUD's um, funding cut and then USDA being the only ones providing this type of housing in rural areas, how do we um, coordinate the other services around it, which are mental health, um, healthcare, and transportation? So integrating and um, integrating these services will be the most difficult part. And we talked about how could we disseminate education as the awareness is moving a lot faster than the actual education of the problem. Um, so we discussed having public libraries um, as a point of contact, um, public health workers coming into communities, teaching, um, faith-based communities or whoever else is prevalent in the community on supportive housing. Uh, we talked about SNAP benefits and having SNAP benefit um, uh, contacts be educated in what's happening with the opioid crisis and connecting people who are getting SNAP benefits. Um, in terms of the challenges, the stigma of drug use uh, is the biggest one. And to, even if we had all the funding, I think that we needed uh, breaking down the stigma of drug use is the number one um, issue. We also, the right doesn't really know what the left is doing in terms of transitional housing. So HUD is cutting transitional housing and there's no available dollars for operational funding. So even if you have the units, you really can't pay for the operational funding through HUD. And USDA, we had a couple wonderful representatives in the group yesterday who to explained to a lot of us from different areas that they have the housing available for active users, but no one really knows where or how to access that or if a supportive service can take that lease and that unit and make it available for an active drug user. There's no real coordination of these services and because some of these are such rural areas, we talked about having larger municipalities um, who have things like syringe exchange at clinics using their outreach vans to go out into the rural areas a couple hundred miles away from the city to, to provide services for one whole day in a smaller town. 
So we talked about how can we provide safe and affordable drug-free housing. Um, the Housing First model was a little bit debated yesterday, which the Housing First model, for those of you who don't know, is housing first. So if the drug user is an active user, they can still um, live in the unit. And then the Housing First provide services to try to get that user um, clean and get a job, whereas transitional housing, 100% um, of the time you need to be clean in order to use the transitional housing. So we talked about housing first model as a step towards transitional housing. Um, the pilot USDA program um, that's providing the rental subsidies for those who are in successful drug court and education as the last one. And how to invest engaged stakeholders is really telling the story, education, telling the story, spreading awareness. That's it. Thank you.